Good morning. morning. What a lovely Father's Day we have today. Uh, You may not know, today is also the first of two options this month, this year anyway, to celebrate um, and to remember World Refugee Day. And so um, that will all be a part of our conversation today. But since Father's Day isn't technically a theological (laughs) gathering... It's not going to be a huge part of the service as a whole, and so we thought we'd take just a moment as we started worship today uh, to share a couple thoughts on Father's Day, and I'm going to read uh, two, two sections from a book called Lamentations of the Father, and then Nyla will read a prayer and a blessing. We are thankful you are here today. So Lamentations of the Father, this wonderful little book I was given. Of the beasts of the field and of the fishes of the sea and of all foods that are acceptable in my sight, you may eat, but not in the living room. (laughs) Of the hoofed animals broiled or ground into burgers, you may eat, but not in the living room. Of the cereal grains, of the corn and of the wheat and of the oats and of all the cereals that are of bright color and unknown provenance, you may eat but not in the living room. Of the quiescently frozen dessert and of all frozen after-meal treats, you may eat, but absolutely not in the living room. Of the juices and other beverages, yes, you even those in sippy cups you may drink, <laughs> but not in the living room, nor may you carry such therein. Indeed, when you reach the place where the living room carpet begins of any food or beverage, there you may not eat, neither may you drink. But if you are sick and lying down and watching something, then you may eat in the living room. (laughs) The second lamentation of the Father. Do not scream, for it is as if you scream all the time. If you are given a plate on which two foods you do not wish to touch each other are touching each other, your voice rises up even to the ceiling while you point to the offense with the finger of your right hand. But I say to you, scream not. Only remonstrate gently with the server that the server may correct the fault. Likewise, if you receive a portion of fish from which every piece of evil... Herbal seasoning has not been scraped off, and the herbal seasoning is loathsome to you and steeped in vileness. Again, I say, refrain from screaming. Though the vileness overwhelm you and cause you a faint unto death, make not that sound from within your throat. Neither cover your face nor press your fingers to your nose. For even now I have made the fish as it should be. Behold, I eat of it myself and do not die. (laughs) Let us pray. Loving God, Heavenly Father, maker of all that is seen and unseen, we adore you and bless you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for adopting us as your children and heirs in Christ our Lord. Thank you for making a home for us in your church and in your heaven forever. Thank you also for the men in our life, for our fathers and for those who have been like fathers to us. We are grateful for their protection and provision, for their encouragement and wisdom, for their correction and persevering love. We are especially grateful for the ways they guide us into your saving embrace. Too often we took their love and sacrifice for granted. Forgive us. Help us to live in such a way that our words and actions bring honor to them and to you. Merciful one, for many this day is full of joy and celebration, but for others it is an especially painful day. Pour out your healing, consolation, and peace on those who are grieving the loss of their fathers or the loss of their child, on families separated by distance or disagreement, on families plagued by disappointment, abandonment, addiction, or abuse. 
compassionate one, bring us your healing, consolation, and peace. Bring all of this to men whose desire to be a father has not been fulfilled and to fathers and guardians who are exhausted as they labor to balance work and raising children, to fathers and guardians who are overwhelmed as they struggle to bring up children in the midst of poverty, disease, or war. The need is deep. Come quickly. Our hope is in you. Gracious God, thank you for every man and boy here today and for everyone we have brought with us in our hearts. Reveal your purpose and plan for their life. Bless them, protect them, deepen their love and trust of you. Strengthen them, empower them, and anoint them with your Holy Spirit, that their faith, influence, and achievement would bring you glory and honor. Receive our thanks and praise again for these men and men in the making, for they are precious to us and to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Happy Father's Day. I invite you to stand as we confess our sins before God and one another. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and one another as we confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the miracle worker, there is more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us sing.
Blessed be the whole and eternity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Job 38, 1 through 11. When the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, who is that that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Grit up your loins like a man. I will question you and you will declare to me, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements, surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors? when it burst out of the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and the thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no further and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Word of God, word of life. Any kids that want to come up and join me for Kids Church? I've got some exes. You can sit right up here and siblings can sit together. Hey, Shalom. Come on. Spencer. Grab an ex. Good job. You want that one? Pick one. <laughs> there you go. Good job. It's so good to see you guys and not on Zoom. Good morning. Did you guys have a good weekend so far? Enjoy the sunshine. Yeah. Does anybody know what today is? What do you think? Thank you. It is Father's Day. Did you guys get a chance to make anything for Dad? Or do you have something to give him later? Yeah? That's good. We've got to do that when I get home. Well, we also, I also used to make stuff for my dad. I used to make cups or bowls for him to keep things on his desk and we definitely used to make him cards. So today is that day that we give thanks for our dads and all that they do for us. But we have another father that we can thank today. Who's that? God, that's right, he's our heavenly father. And even if you don't have a father here on earth or don't see your father very often, you can always have God in your life, your heavenly father. See these bags I've got? These are gifts that are fun to give a dad here on earth. Would you like to see some of the things that I've given my dad in the past? Yeah? All right, you wanna do, let's look at this one first. All right, anyone know what these are? Let's see if I can grab. What's that? Socks. Anybody ever gotten your dad a pair of socks? Dad likes socks, right? Yeah, especially pink ones. All right. Well, that's a good option for dad if you haven't gotten him a present yet. All right. Let's see what's in this one. How about one of these? What's that? A scarf. That's a good guess. It's a tie. Anybody's dads have these hanging in their closet? Yeah. Yeah. 
Dad might like some new ties, you think? All right, that's another good option. All right. So let's see what's in the last one. What is this? A cup. What goes in this cup? What does dad like? Coffee, that's right. Whose dad like needs a new travel coffee cup? Yeah, anybody? Are those all good presents for our dads here on earth? What about our heavenly father? Do you think he needs one of these? What do you think a good present would be for God, for our heavenly father? Any thoughts? Do you know? I have an idea. I found a Bible verse. Do you want to hear it? Here's what I think our heavenly father would like. It's Mark 12, 30 through 31. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. That's pretty easy, isn't it? It's not a gift you have to go out and buy. It's something you can just give. God only asks for our love, and he wants us to love one another. Can you do that? I can do that. All right. We're going to do a little sing-along for our prayer today. Think you can do it with me? I'll sing it first, and then you repeat after me. Y'all help me out, okay? Here we go. God, our Father, God, our Father, we thank you for many blessings. Amen. Thanks, you guys. You can head back to your seats, okay? I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel today comes from Mark chapter 4, beginning at the 35th verse. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose. The waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever wondered at the questions that seem to plague the disciples in the boat today? God, are you here? God, do you care? Where are you, and why aren't you answering? In 1987, my sister, who's three years older than I am, a bright, joyful, amazing, cheerleading, softball-playing salutatorian, was diagnosed in her first year on campus at college with schizophrenia. Through the years, through the clouds and the difficulty, my family and I prayed and cried out to God again and again for answers, for clarity, for hope, for life, for her. She died this past September. 
not ever really finding that clarity, that life that seemed to be what she should have had. In 2001, my dad, an active man, a hiker, dancer, doer, was involved in a car accident that left him paralyzed from the neck down. He lived as a quadriplegic in a wheelchair. Through the recovery, through the years of difficulty, my family and I prayed for healing, for strength, for any sense of feeling below the neck for my dad. He died near Thanksgiving in 2018 without that feeling, without that change. I have asked these questions. We each have those moments in our life that we face. We face not just physical death, emotional, occupational, familial death in our lives. It comes at us, and, and we ask the questions, are you here? Do you care? And without fail, the answer has always come back. Yes, I am here. Yes, I care. Throughout Scripture, there is only one enemy. We call it many different things, but there is only one enemy, and that one enemy is death. No matter the form it takes, death is the enemy. Physical, emotional, spiritual, you name it. Death comes in a thousand ways. And when the storms of life hit and chaos begins to reign, we begin to feel the fear and death seems to show up, no different than the disciples in the boat. In the gospel reading today, in this gospel of Mark, Jesus rebukes the storm. He rebukes the wind that is raging all around them and says to the sea, peace, be still. This storm, this bringer of chaos and fear, this bringer of very easily death is rebuked. It is the same thing Jesus does to the demon in chapter 1 of the Gospel of Mark. It is the same word, not just in English. Jesus rebukes the demon. Jesus rebukes the storm. And the response of those who are around him is the same in both cases. In chapter 1, who is this that even the unclean spirits obey him? In chapter 4, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? And in the midst of it, Jesus is revealed. The Son of God, the Word made flesh, is here, is present, is active. Power over the spirits in the world, the God who knit these bodies together in an intricate and frightening matter. This God is here, and this God who we call the great physician can bring life. This one who knit us together, we pray, God, clean the spirit. This God who spoke at the beginning of all creation and said to the waves, I love that Job reading, who said to the waves, thus far you shall come and no farther. Here is the boundary I set for you. That God now says calm. The one who set the boundaries. God, the one who brings salvation in the center, in the midst of God's people, rebuking anything that takes life. Any life from any person because God is acting for salvation for all people. Look into your world. Think about your world for just a moment. Where are the storms in your life? 
grief, anxiety, money, you name it. Where is it in your head? Where Just get that in your head. Where are the storms in your life? And you will begin to identify where the fear is in your life. And you will be able to see where the storms are. Look at the world now, not just your life, but the world around you. Where are the storms in the world that are around you? Where is death all too present? And who is dying? Instead of asking whether God cares or if God is present, when we already have that answer, Scripture tells us again and again, the question we finally have to answer is whether we will choose to live as though God is present or not. Because God is present. Lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. The bringer of salvation for all is here, is with us for everyone. Will we trust that word? The one who is with us, right? We call this one Emmanuel, literally translated as God with us the bringer of salvation, will we trust this God? Who is it that's going to show up? Who is it that will bring salvation? What does that mean? (laughs) What does salvation look like? Salvation for whom? Salvation from what? Not just eternity. There's got to be something now that affects me. Salvation changes my world today. It is salvation from anything that would destroy the gift of life itself. Salvation that would take from any created child of God what God has created in them. Our struggle to see this is so clear. Our struggle to see this happens because we are more comfortable with the separation than we are the closeness. More comfortable with the divisions than we are the connections. And we do this with our ideological differences. We do this with our political affiliations. We do this with our denominations. We do this with our comfort. (laughs) You make me uncomfortable, go away. God doesn't create the separation. God doesn't ask for the separation. That's ours. We create that for our comfort in order to avoid what makes us afraid, what presents death to us, our fear. We run, we hide, we separate, we divide. And in all of that, we do not defeat it. We grant it more strength and more power. We Even we, the church. So what is the role of the church if we are comfortable in that place? What is the central responsibility for those who profess to follow this Lord of life, this God who shows up, this bringer of salvation, this destroyer of death? What is the role of the church? Our only job is to celebrate life hope, grace, with and for all people. Or, to put it in an even simpler frame, our call, our role is to fight against death that comes in any form for anybody. That's it. To stand betwixt that which would kill and those whom God loves. And it doesn't matter if you agree with them, like them, or understand them. They are still a child God loves. Now I say this, and I want to make you aware of something um, you may not know. (laughs) June is my month. I, I know I'm only one out of about 7 billion people on this planet, but June is mine. One-twelfth of of it belongs to me. 
My anniversary is this month. Father's Day is this month. My birthday is this month. This is mine. It's mine. You may not know this. I'm kind of a big deal. And I've I've always enjoyed this because so much of this month is just it fully. This is this sounds horrible. It focuses on me (laughs) and my comfort. Right? My my wife makes amazing cakes and food, and she presents me with gifts. And she right, it's awesome. And I get to sit back and I say, "How can I help?" And she says, "Oh, I got it." But more and more. As I experience Junes in my world, I'm aware of others who seem to also claim June as their own. Celebrations, memory that comes up. D-Day, June 6th. We remember and celebrate those that gave their life for others to live. Flag Day, we commemorate and remember the gift of the freedom and the grace that is supposed to be what happens underneath that flag. In recent years, more have been added, right? Just this year, Juneteenth was added. It's not new. It's been celebrated for 70 years. You just didn't know about it. I didn't either. Not to the last few years. It's a celebration of the news of liberation. It's not the celebration of the liberation itself. That was already true two years before. They had been free for two years. They just hadn't been told. Church ought to understand that kind of reality and celebrate with those for whom liberation comes They thought they were held in captivity. They thought they were held in death, but it was a lie. And so on that day, we stop to remember those who have been killed, forgotten, and set aside just for being seen as different. June is also Pride Month, where we stop to remember the right to love and live life as God created it, as God loves people. We are called to do the same as we remember those who have been killed, forgotten, and set aside for, for simply being different. And I told you earlier, today is Refugee Day. That's a UN designation. And so we don't really have any refugees that are created in the Western Hemisphere, in the Americas, because the UN isn't that active, especially in Central America. And so we call them immigrants. Today and next Sunday, we come together and we can highlight and remember those who are displaced by fear, caused by violence and war and famine and weather, remembering the fight to simply not be killed, forgotten, or set aside just because they are seen as different. These are all communities, people whom God loves without reservation. These are all communities, people for whom God suffered and died and to whom God sends his church. They face death that we can help stop. They face persecution, separation, isolation, mental illness in ways that we do not, and we can help stop. We can stand against, standing with, by, and for them. Now, some would call and will call this political. And they will say, it's none of the church's business. And they will say we should stand aside. And unfortunately, the church has too often let those voices carry the day. If we are a people who stand for life, if we are a people who stand for salvation for all, we must stand for all. When we have st-
stepped aside. We have failed to fight the death that is right in front of us. We have failed to fight the enemy of the church. We have failed in these times to be the representational body of Christ in the world, and we fail to be the church. The problematic reality we face is that our comfort gets in the way. Who are we, the church, willing to sacrifice to be comfortable? Hey, God, this makes me uncomfortable. Are you here? Do you care? Where are you? Why am I afraid? Can you fix this for me? If we, who are most comfortable can ask these questions in the midst of our comfort when faced with those who intrude our comfort, looking at those who intrude on our comfort, imagine the questions they have had to ask God as they faced exclusion, violence, threats, abuse, hunger, homelessness, illness, captivity, war, as they simply sought the option for life and hope and grace. The church has all too often been silent as death has been spoken into the community, allowing beloved children of God to be treated as something less, less to be sacrificed on the altar of comfort and safety as this month reminds us and every other month in different ways we have done this again and again and again to BIPOC people to LGBTQ people, to refugees and immigrants, to communities, people who are vulnerable, derided, set aside, forgotten, and killed. And we've done it before. We did it to God, who challenged our faith for being too small, too limited, too willing to accept death. We do this out of expediency, out of a desire for comfort and ease, out of a need to keep the peace and the status quo. Where are the storms? We can identify them. We can see them, and it makes us uncomfortable crying out in the midst again like the disciples, where are you? Why are you not paying attention, God? And God says, I am I am here. God says, I can do something. And I will and have rebuked what is killing you. Are you willing to do the same for those I created and for those I love? God says, I am here. I will be beside you through whatever storm you face. Are you willing to do the same for those whom I created and whom I love? Who is this? Who is this that the unclean spirits obey? Who is this that the wind and the waves obey him? This is the God of creation. This is the God of salvation, the one who brings life so that when the storms of life hit, God is present, most visible, where the church lives that same grace, life, and salvation out in its community for others. When the center of what we know shifts, Jesus is revealed as the purpose of God set loose in the world. And we are called, we are invited, welcomed simply to trust this one, to have faith that though we do not understand, though we are uncomfortable and facing fear, God is in our midst. God is here. For you. God has rebuked what is destroying you in no different way. God is with you pouring out grace upon grace for you to help set others free. You are free. Invite others to tell them that though they may not know it, they are already free. To tell them that though you may not understand they are deeply loved. To tell them that they, though they are exposed and displaced, 
they will find rest, to tell them that if God's grace is big enough for me, if God's grace is big enough for me, it includes you. Grace is the power of God poured into the world through the faithful with the purpose of revealing life in the deface of destructive culture, destructive politics, destructive ideologies. You can identify them because they draw lines between us. So again, we speak as the disciples speak. Who then is this? that we worship. This is the rescuer in the face of the storm. This is the bringer of salvation. This is the one who loves you and all people past death itself. And this God sends us to do the same. It is a holy calling. But it's amazing. It is there we will see God most clearly. May your eyes be awakened. May your heart be opened. And may that calling take hold of you this week. Amen. Let us sing. I invite you to stand if you are able. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to turn and greet one another from your pews and at home take time to greet one another with the Lord's peace. I invite you to be seated. We always tell people if it's comfortable to stand. We never say if it's comfortable, go ahead and sit. But they seem to just stay there anyway. A uh, couple of announcements. And first, I want to share with you, would you go forward one screen? That seems interesting. Go forward. There it is. Yesterday, Pastor Nyla and I Got to go spend a little time right along a golf course. I was a little distracted by the swinging sounds of hitting golf balls behind us. But we had a chance to celebrate with Cooper his baptism and the family out there. So this is in the midst of the baptism. And then one more slide forward. There we go, and Nyla's proclamation that we have a child of God in our midst. Welcome to the family, Cooper. lovely. We also have a greeting to share. Could you go one more slide forward? Happy Father's Day. We love you. Happy Father's Day, Dad. We love you. Thank you for taking me on bike ride. Thank you for your squeezy help. Thanks for playing those vampires with me. We love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for playing our fun <laughs> and taking us fun places. Love you. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thank you so much for supporting us through things like school and dance, and most importantly, supporting us through our faith journey. We love you. Dad, you make the best cheeseburgers. Dad, you always make me laugh. Dad, thanks for letting us store the 200-pound robot in our garage. <laughs> Dad, thanks for always helping me clean the smelly chameleon cage. We love, we you, love Dad. you, Dad. Happy Father's Day to you, Dad. So grateful for your compassion and the love that you bring to all others around you. Love you. Happy Father's Day! Thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for taking care of us. We love, we love you. Happy Father's Day. I love you. Perfect. One more forward, yeah. That's just... I mean, we got to use our screens, right? They're there for a reason. How about we just say thanks for those that shared the greetings? Just a, it's a good morning. Three other notes I just want to make really briefly as we go forward. First, Clink meets again this Thursday, 6.30 at uh, Big Block Brewing. I think that's what it's called, Big Block. I'm just going to go with that. At Big Block at 6.30, join us for that. Uh, Andy, this coming Saturday is the property team work day, right? On the last Saturday of every month, there's going to be the opportunity to gather and to help kind of make sure that everything here stays in good condition. And each month will be a little bit of a different focus. What time should folks be here if they want to be a part of that? I think he said it's 930. 930. So you... If they show up early, that's okay. If, if they show up early, it's good. Good. Andy will be here at 9. We're just making sure that things are cleaned and taken care of and look good. Part of the way that we create a welcoming environment is to keep our eyes on the gifts as stewards of what God has given us. This is one of the ways we are stewards of our facility. Lastly, and I think you would all like to hear this, um, we are in discussion to consider mask removal in worship starting in July. Um, and, and all, I'm going to say, caveat, all things being equal, 
without major changes, that is, looks like what we will be doing. So hopefully, God bless, we can actually set those aside as much as possible. Now, I stood in that place, didn't I? Um, as much as possible, you are always welcome to wear a mask in worship. You don't have to be mandated. If you are more comfortable wearing the mask because of what is around you, that is a legitimate, important thing to acknowledge, and we encourage you to take hold of that. So you are always encouraged and welcomed. If it helps you to feel safer and more included and connected, please feel free to wear your mask. But when we remove that, you will not be required to wear it. And I know that's hard language in a church, right? We don't like rules and laws and shoulds and coulds and woulds. We just like freedom. It's coming. It's coming. Let us worship God with our offering. beautiful. Again, I invite you to stand if you are able. We join together in prayer before God, responding to each petition with words from today's psalm, your mercy endures forever. O God of our salvation, we praise you for your continual mercy to the church. Hold the ark of the church in your loving hand and give our leaders endurance through all manner of hardship and storm and guide us in the way that we should go. O Lord, our life, receive our prayers. Your mercy endures forever. At this time of the summer solstice, we praise you for the magnificence of nature. Hold the cosmos in your loving hand. 
inspire us to care for your wonderful works seen in ocean de depths, in lakes, in rivers, in wells. O star of our night, receive our prayers. Your mercy endures forever. We praise you for the good that we receive in this nation. Purge from us prejudice against those who differ from us in any way. On this World Refugee Day, we pray that refugees travel in safety and reach the promise of a better life for their families. A hope of every nation, receive our prayers. Your mercy endures forever. We praise you for the gladsome opportunities to travel on rivers, lakes, and seas. Protect all who sail your waters and keep coastal dwellers safe from the tempests and rising sea levels. Wondrous sovereign of the seas, receive our prayers. Your mercy endures forever. We praise you for the loving support of fathers to their children. Bless fathers, stepfathers, foster fathers, godfathers, and all of each gender who give fatherly care. Comfort those who grieve because they cannot father a child. Wherever children are deprived of fathers, provide responsible and affectionate care. Eternal fathers, strong to save, receive our prayers. Your mercy endures forever. We praise you for the lessening of the pandemic, and we pray for all around the globe who continue to face the coronavirus. Open wide our hearts to all who suffer. Send healing to any who are sick, especially those we name before you in our hearts or aloud. Rock of Ages, receive our prayers. Your mercy endures forever. We praise you for yet another Sunday, for another week before us in all our doings. Lead us and guide us and mercifully accept our personal petitions. Jesus, Savior, pilot me and receive my prayers. Your mercy endures forever. We praise you for all who died in the faith, especially those we name before you. And we ask that at our end, you unite us with all the saints into your presence. O harbor in every storm, receive our prayers. Your mercy endures forever. We praise you for the steadfast love, your steadfast love, and we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the spirit of the living Christ fill you with faith and trust, burn in you with the fire of love, enliven your bones, body, and life, and breathe through you the breath of life. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing.
go in peace, live in faith, hope, love, and service. Thanks be to God. Thank you.